let's talk about buying a house that has an existing vinyl liner swimming pool. Before we even get started, this is not a replacement for hiring professional inspectors, both a home inspector and also hire a local swimming pool professional to come and take a look at this pool and provide you a report on the condition of it. It's very important and very insightful to get the professional opinion from a local specialist. Swimming pools in general are very, it's, it's, they're uniquely installed and using unique de materials depending on where you're located. So much as even in one town, there can be certain areas of town which are known to have specific problems. This is very common in the pool industry, and it often would relate to something like groundwater tables or something like that. So you can get a lot of information from a local specialist, and if you're buying a house, I mean, how careful do you want to be? This is as careful as you could ever possibly need to be because you know, a broken swimming pool that's kind of like masquerading as a pool that's totally fine, it can suck so bad, it can cost you a bundle of money, and it really backs you in a corner in a way that if you haven't thought about this in advance, you can really get, you know, into a snafu here where you're on the hook for major renovation costs or major costs to eliminate the pool. You're kind of not given any option here. And you're like, well, I'll just leave it. You can't leave it. The city will be on you about that. You have to open and operate pools or they'd be like a cesspit, right? And you'd have parasites and <laughs> raccoon infestations living in your little backyard uh, swamp that you're creating and your neighbors will complain and, and you can't have that. So it, it really does back you into a corner. And sometimes there's not good options. Like, Maybe you live in a development where the pool was kind of built when the place was built and it used to be farmland behind that. And they just backed the cement truck up to it and all the workers. And all. Now it's like townhouses all over the place. You can't get heavy equipment into where you are anymore. Maybe your neighbors aren't as agreeable as they were back in 1974 when all of this stuff was installed and they're not willing to let you take down fences and drive heavy equipment across their lawn for three months this summer. You know, maybe they're just not into that. It's not that common anymore to encounter the, you know, fully compliant neighbors that are just having brewskis with you talking over the fence as the pool's getting built. You know, it's, it's really not like that anymore, unfortunately. So you're buying a house with a vinyl pool. The purpose of this video is so that you can go to a house that you're considering buying. And we've already talked about how you're going to hire specialists to come in and help you take a look at this pool and evaluate it. But do you want to do that for every single pool that you're thinking of? Like, what I mean, what if you've, you've looked at 10 houses, you know, and you can't hire people to come and look at all of them. And you can't really get serious on the house until you know what the deal is with this pool. That's what this video is for. I want to arm you with some basic information that you can learn really quickly in this video. I mean, this video is going to be a little long, I can tell, but you're going to learn a lot about vinyl pools, how they go together, how they fail, where they fail, what to look for. And again, this isn't to replace all that other, this is just supplemental information to help make you an informed purchaser as you're buying this home or this real estate property that has this vinyl pool attached to it. It, a vinyl pool might not have the luxury of a concrete or gunite pool, but it can still cost you a lot if you're dealing with the wrong set of circumstances, especially in today's day and age. Things are getting expensive these days, especially in the world of swimming pools. Demand is way up for swimming pools. I'm 30 plus years in the industry. This is some of the highest demand that I've ever experienced personally. When you build a vinyl pool, it's a system. The entire thing works together as a system. And, you know, the average homeowner might not appreciate that necessarily on the surface level. Just, it's a pool. What's the big deal? Well, there's a couple of different integral components. And they're all built into one another. And they all have to work together in order to, you know, for example, not all the, let, the, let all the water leak out of your pool. So that's a good example to work with here. And uh, the different parts of this system, the deck the coping track, the liner, the plumbing, and then the filtration equipment. So that's kind of like the different components here. And of course, they all have to work together to arrive at a swimming pool. I'm going to break those down in depth one by one so that you can kind of walk up to each of those things and evaluate that individual component and then look at the whole project. 
putting all those individual components together, and that's going to give you a pretty good idea the condition of this vinyl liner swimming pool. Let's start on the equipment pad. So every swimming pool needs a pump and a filter. Everything else past that is optional. So you're always going to find the pump and the filter, and you'd find that on the cheapest, cheapest pools. More commonly, especially for an in-ground vinyl liner swimming pool, pump, filter, heater, salt chlorinator, possibly an automation system, a half dozen peripheral items really that there could be installed on this pool. And we can tell important information about each of these by inspecting them carefully and looking for the service plates. And these are going to have information like brand, make, and model numbers. And that's exactly what we're looking for, serials, model numbers. And then you're going to take that information and you're going to go straight to the internet and you're going to download the owner's guide or the owner's manual for that specific piece of equipment that you're looking at. And you'll be able to do that easily because the manufacturers of the equipment makes them all available now digitally. It's super convenient and there's no reason not to have it. And if you're a technical person and you think you'd benefit from it, you can probably just download the installation guide as well. So knowing the brand, make, and model of the equipment, you also might be able to look up some additional information. If you did some research, perhaps there's a way that you can date the equipment based upon the numbers that you're seeing here as the brand, make, or model serial numbers. And if you could, that would be helpful because the average lifespan of swimming pool equipment these days, I would say would be seven to 10 years. Now that's not a hard and fast rule because there's seasonal pools, there's pools that go year round, there's all, there's all kinds of considerations here, but I'm just giving you a working number here. And I would say, you know, even to qualify that seven to 10 seasonal pool kind of spectrum, maybe like three to five or three to seven for the really demanding environments, you know, a, a pool pump that operates year round and in the summer and, you know, Arizona sun blazing down. You're not, you're not getting 10 years out of that pump. But, you know, it gives you kind of a spectrum to work with here. Three to seven years for the really demanding environments, maybe seven to ten years for the seasonal pools, something like that. Pump, filter, heater, salt chlorinator. I mean, they're all going to be pretty close to that. Like a salt chlorinator is going to be three to five years on average for the cell. A filter, if, if everything went well, you could get 20 or 30 years out of a filter. We used to get 20 to 30 years out of filters, but you don't anymore. You know, 7 to 10 on average is unfortunately about what to expect. Same with heaters. You know, I think that my grandparents had a heater that was 30 some odd years old. I see 7 to 10 year old heaters that are leaking no longer serviceable units all the time. Like, I mean, you see heaters three to five years old leaking and unserviceable. So yeah, I mean, seven to 10, that's kind of like your maximum age for the equipment. So if you can research brand, make and model on every piece on the pad, pump, filter, heater, salt chlorinator, automation system, everything, you're going to have a pretty good idea where you're at in the spectrum in terms of, do I need to replace all this stuff soon? Like maybe, maybe you don't know anything about this kind of stuff. How old is this filter? Well, this filter is nine years old after doing my research. It'd be like, well, you hope for longer life, but you kind of expect it's getting towards the end of its service life. And that would probably be a pretty accurate assessment of a nine-year-old filter. Same thing for a pump, heater, anything like that. Moving along, let's talk about the interior surface of this vinyl liner swimming pool, which is a vinyl liner. So, you can just tell by looking at the liner overall. Just walk to the pool and take a look at it. How does it look? You know, perfect would be a box I would love to check. It looks fantastic. I see no signs of any deficiencies at all. Everything looks great. Perfect. And in terms of how long this liner is expected to last, how long before you would need to replace this liner, even if it was brand new in the pool right now, well, I'm going to say about 7 to 10 years, actually. And you would hope for 15 years, and we used to get 20 to 30 years back when we used to use formaldehyde in the liner making process, but <laughs> we don't do that anymore. And you get about 7 to 10 years for the lifetime of a pool liner these days. Looking at this liner, are there any signs of deficiencies? Are there patches? 
Are there, you know, was the water level too low and it's not operating? Is there, uh, what else could be wrong with it? Is the liner extra tight in the corners? That would be a thing that I would look at. As liners age, they lose their elasticity, and that ultimately is what leads them to fail and need to be replaced. So, you know, the stuff that's above the water level, you, know, you can poke at it and feel, and it's like an elastic band that's been left out in the sun. At first, it's very pliable and rubbery, but as it ages, it, be, it becomes stiff, you know, flaky a little bit, and eventually, if you were to just let it dry out completely, an old liner will turn brittle. So much so that if you try to fold it or something, it will shatter like glass, like dangerously, and you, you, you have to wear protection. That's why pros know this. If you're getting rid of an old liner, you never let it dry out. You always you know, cut it up and roll it up while it's still wet because if you let it dry out, it turns into one big mess. Looking at this liner further, is there any sign that it has slipped out of the coping track? Like it's all in all along. Oh, there's a little, little spot where it slipped out. Pay close attention to that connection point between the liner and the coping track. A failure in this area can force your hand into things like a liner and coping renovation. And as we're going to get into in a minute, it can be a pretty bad thing for your swimming pool. Well, not so much your swimming pool as your budget relating to your swimming pool. The final thing before we move on to the coping track, I just want you to pay attention. Does it look like this liner is tattooed to the walls and the floor or does it look kind of like it's floating or is it big wrinkles all over the floor anything that looks funny here would indicate to me that there might be a lurking problem with this pool a floating liner can be a simple fix and a simple problem but it can also be a very complicated problem with very, very expensive and difficult solutions only. So a floating pool liner from the perspective of a person looking to buy a house with a pool would be a very big red flag and something that I would want you to be paying close attention to. And if you're looking at a pool and it's older, you can tell the liner is a little older, but it's very tight to the walls, very tight to the floor, no floating gap or signs of wrinkles or anything like that. All that's a pretty good sign to me. We'll get to the coping track in a second, but I want to talk about the walls themselves for a second. If you go to where the skimmer is, the rectangle that's at the water level or at the top of the wall in case the water level isn't where it's supposed to be, all around the skimmer, I want you to kind of feel carefully the wall around that feeling through the liner itself it should all be perfectly smooth but do you feel a bunch of roughness or something that is very likely to be corrosion underneath and all around that skimmer that's a very common spot to have leaks in swimming pools especially long-term unchecked leaks in swimming pools which can lead to extensive damage and deterioration of the walls the walls of a pool should be smooth they should feel smooth and if you can feel it and it it feels like it's rust or something's going on under there it's entirely possible that you have corrosion on the walls of the pool which usually isn't a death sentence for a vinyl liner pool but it would represent something that has been leaking for a while and something that's going to need more money more energy in order to repair in addition to the skimmer mouth i might be inclined to check around the returns as well and they're the small round orifices where the water returns back into the pool and just feel around the walls of those as well for any signs of extensive corrosion another example of co extensive corrosion would be rust actually bleeding through the screw holes and running down the face plates and and uh maybe even staining the liner itself and none of that would be a good sign and i would go ahead and assume that's been leaking for a pretty long time so if you're buying this house you can pretty much count on you're buying somebody else's long-term problem and again probably not a death sentence for the pool but definitely increasing the cost the time the, tech, the technical complexity of the repair that you're going to have to do for that matter does the floor look good in this pool again you know you should be able to see all the slopes and angles very clearly defined a high quality pool has very 
defined slopes and angles. Uh, it shouldn't look like the surface of the moon. Like, it is a handmade product, but it should still look pretty good. And in professional hands, the skilled builders do make it look very good. The amateurs make it look a lot less good. And the people who built the pool for themselves, who have never built a pool before, tend to make it look least good, not through any fault of their own. It's just, this is a trade. This is an experience. Experience helps when you're building swimming pools, especially something like concrete working and you know we're, we're not even talking about flat work here we're talking about angles and intersecting slopes and stuff like that and it all has to be built perfectly to spec it, it takes a skilled hand and if you've ever watched you know a, a mason working some some concrete they make it look easy it, they make it look so easy just and they're done you know they're mostly just sitting around drinking coffee uh, give it a try. Give it a try. It's a lot harder than it looks. So now we've arrived at the coping track. To confuse matters a little bit, a concrete pool coping is an entirely different thing than a vinyl liner pool coping. Same word, entirely different products, applications, and everything. So I'm just going to try to use the word coping track as much as possible just to make sure that I'm defining what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the thing that you hang the liner into. There's a bead on your liner, like a big, uh, you know, they double or quadruple up the liner thickness at the very edges, and that goes into a slot, and then you hang the liner. And just the force of gravity pulling straight down on that 90 degree bend on the liner is all you need to hold it in place. However, if that coping track were to fail, you could end up in a situation where the liner goes in, but it won't stay in. It just keeps falling out. There's a tiny little lip on the bottom of a coping track that's supposed to kind of like hinge and hold that bead in place. And if that gets broken, then you can't hold the liner in there. You can try to stuff things like liner lock or pennies or things like that in there to hold the liner in place. But ultimately, if the coping track itself is broken, you're going to have to replace it. And that usually involves kind of doing a bigger job. You're probably going to have to replace the liner. In almost every case, the coping gets done. The liner has to get done too. But a lot of the time, the coping is integrated into the deck. And that can be a real problem. Or at least, let's say, that can be a real expensive problem. And it can definitely force your hand into some repairs that you might not be prepared to do. A deck integrated coping on a vinyl liner swimming pool could be bullnose coping, or there's a lot of different names for it, but essentially what it is is the coping gets installed and it has the track that holds the liner, but also it's there's like a you know, it's also standing up vertically three and a half inches commonly, and it acts as the front side form for your concrete pour. So you pour your pool deck out of concrete, and that concrete also flows into that bullnose coping, for example, and now the front side form doesn't get pulled away like you normally would with concrete work. It just stays permanently. The coping just stays permanently as the front side form, and you, we've all seen this quintessential look for the vinyl liner pool with the white bullnose uh, coping. That's a deck-integrated coping, and it was really really popular for a long time and it still is to a certain degree although it looks different these days when that stuff fails that's basically as bad as it gets for a vinyl liner swimming pool and a bunch of you who have this problem who are patiently watching the series waiting to hear me talk about this just sigh deeply right now it is what it is when when your deck starts to fail around a vinyl liner swimming pool which has a deck integrated coping the coping will go with the deck. It's not super strong stuff. It is attached to the top of the pool wall, usually with some sort of galvanized steel hardware, but all that stuff's just going to shear off, and the power of the deck is just going to tear out the coping. The liner's going to go with it to a certain degree, maybe rip the liner, but usually just slip out, and then you've got like these gaps and holes and elevation problems with your deck and all that. So there's a lot going on. Let's unpack that a little bit here. The deck is failing. Maybe it was done poorly more likely there was a leak. First of all, we're around, around a swimming pool, so there's always water. There's always water, especially with kids, you know, in and out all the time. There's water all over the place. So the pool has to be built properly to account for that, or else you're going to have problems. If the deck cracks and breaks and starts to migrate, 
and then you have more water intrusion in places where you shouldn't have, and nobody goes out there with some concrete urethane and seals those gaps up to prevent further erosion. Now you get advanced rates of erosion, and the deck sinks and moves further and all kinds of stuff. Or it could be worse than that, is, is none of that's really happening, but you have an underground leak that is doing all that stuff for you without you knowing. Underground leaks in vinyl liner swimming pools, of course, are fairly common and one of the hallmarks would be you know a majorly cracked pool deck that's kind of sinking or maybe only one section or like here's an example if i walk up to a pool and there's a big crack in the pool deck i'm like oh look at that and the first thing i do is look in the pool is is there a return right there by any chance because the answer is almost always yes and that pipe is almost certainly leaking if not there somewhere close to there and it's allowing erosion underground. The substrate that's supporting the concrete deck is eroding and it's no longer doing its job. And the deck cracks and breaks and starts to migrate and move. And unfortunately, in this case, we're talking about the deck integrated coping. So that breaks as well. So what happens now? Well, one option. You re and re the deck. You break out all the concrete. Take it all away. Probably do some work like plumbing repairs and things like that and then eventually re-pour a new deck with a new coping and a new liner. So I just described a lot of money you're going to have to spend. Deck, coping, and liner on a vinyl liner swimming pool. It's basically your total overhaul because we, you know, I just identified there was probably leaks. So we're doing leaks as well. So plumbing, concrete, coping, liner... How does the equipment room look? Is it all brand new? Probably not, eh? So now you're talking about a new pool. You need to basically do the entire overhaul for the swimming pool. And a lot of people at that point, I'll tell you what they do. They sell their house. And it's a, you know, a lot of people would say that's a dirty move. I mean, I guess that's for the lawyers to decide, but I'm just telling you what people do. Oh, my! I have a deck integrated coping failure on my pool and my deck is sinking and breaking and going. The pool's still full of water. The kids are still swimming right now. The pictures look good. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you're going to buy this house with a deck integrated coping failure. Just to put a little star next to this, there are things you can do if you owned one of these pools. You know, maybe you can do something to stop the deck from getting worse and you can do some repairs there you don't have to do everything necessarily sometimes you can hang a new coping track it's called a single track f style wall mount coping track look that up and install that on the wall directly underneath where the existing coping track is using a lot of hardware usually tap cons you know and normally you would use tech screws galvanized steel tech screws for swimming pool coping installations but in this case you probably end up using tap cons because there's probably concrete behind what you're trying to attach to and because you're doing a wall mount gravity's not with you you have to overkill it with extra hardware so that's why you're doing this job this this uh wall mount coping underneath the old one it's touch and go i've done a bunch of those things man that is hard work so you're definitely in for some hard work there i think it's like a three drills you need because you gotta first you drill a hole through the the galvanized steel so you need like the drill bit for that and then you gotta switch out to the masonry bit to get through the concrete that's behind it and then you switch out to another drill with the hex bit on it so that you can drive the tap cons in and man, i just remember i must have sweat like five gallons you know on the hot summer days lying on the deck of pools just going around installing those kinds of things i've done dozens and dozens of those that's hard work but it's not necessarily expensive work you know if you're a hard working person and you can operate the kind of drills and the you know the terminology that i'm using here you know like tech screws and masonry bits and all that stuff isn't intimidating to you yeah you could probably do it you can probably fix one of these deck integrated coping failures without having to replace the entire deck coping and liner of your swimming pool you'll just have to do the liner and this you know in this very inexpensive uh coping mount talking about the deck of this swimming pool there's a very important symptom or sign that i want you to look for and this is something that you would notice at the skimmers, the returns, the lights, anywhere there's any kind of feature or fixture in this swimming pool. Is there a rectangle cut into the pool deck where it's obvious somebody's had to cut into it, do something, and then pour a concrete patch to repair it? 
You can never hide that stuff, so you can, you'll be able to see it for sure. And this is very telling. If you had that around the skimmer, for example, well, I think we know for a fact there was a leak at this skimmer at some time in the past. Or what if this pool has one return where there's a square cut next to that return? Well, that's very interesting. They've, they've done a repair here. And you might think to yourself, well, good, that's, they've repaired it. I'm happy that it's fixed. What it says to me is, oh, interesting. How many returns are there in this swimming pool? And let's say you say four. And I say, okay, then we have three more returns that are leaking that we're going to need to fix because one was already leaking. Picture the person who installed this equipment. The day that they installed it, the guy who does the returns just does all the returns. So he does the one. Whatever he does that day goes on to fail and become a leaking return. But that guy just gets up and immediately goes on to the next one and does the next one the exact same way with the same materials, everything exactly the same way he did the first one. So unless it's a unique situation where some sort of localized event has caused this leak, chances are all of this stuff is going to be a problem for you. And it just so happens that nobody's looked hard enough to notice that this pool is probably leaking, or let's assume it's not leaking at all, it's probably hanging on by the skin of its teeth, and if you buy this house with this vinyl pool, you're probably going to be the person who owns it when one day just, man, this water level is dropping like three, six inches a day, what's going on here? I'd start looking at those returns or grab a, grab a Fisher Price stethoscope and start listening on the pool wall right above where that return is, and you'll probably hear some gurgling. So I've kind of reached the end of the, you know, the pool system here where we've talked about the deck, the coping, the liner track, or sorry, the, the deck, the coping track, the liner, the pool equipment, all of it working together as a pool system. But I want to highlight some important individual items that I want you to specifically scrutinize. One, skimmers. In the skimmer, take the skimmer basket out, Use a flashlight, look very carefully for cracks anywhere in the bottom, sides, in the throat, anywhere, or signs of repairs. Do you see any signs that somebody's been using silicone epoxy or any other thing to make a repair to a previous crack down inside the body or especially around the throat? So you basically swim up to your skimmer and you're looking at a rectangle. First of all, do you see any epoxy around there? No? Great sign. Look inside the rectangle and do you see any on the back side? That's probably the most common spot because if you see some there, this skimmer has probably been leaking for a long time. There are no real repairs that you can do to a leaking skimmer, so somebody has done their best to stem what is an unknown amount of water that we are losing from this pool. Long-term water loss in a vinyl liner swimming pool can lead to some pretty extensive repairs in terms of damage to the walls, structural wall, you know, damage in a worst case scenario, all kinds of stuff that you definitely want to avoid if you can. Moving on to another thing I want you to look closely at. Often in a vinyl liner swimming pool, you'll find in-wall steps. So these would be like fiberglass or acrylic steps, commonly white or other colors sometimes. And they, they extend outside of the perimeter of the pool. And these things are expensive. A little hard to install, not super hard, but just hard enough that if you don't do it right, you're not going to get longevity out of this product, and you want longevity out of it. Man, the looks on people's faces when I get a quote for, you know, installing those steps, you know, back in the day, especially because they weren't common, you know, 70s, 80s, and 90s, nobody really had them. That was when we were putting all these in for the first time, and people would say, oh, how much for this liner? And I'd say, oh, it's like 2500 for this liner installed. And they'd be like, oh, that sounds pretty good. Hey, uh, what about those steps? We want to put those steps in too. And, I'm, and I would say like, oh, okay, like 5,000. And they go, wow, the liner and the steps 5,000? And I'd say, no, no, just the steps are $5,000. And honestly, 
I, I was hard pressed to take that work because it was hard work. Like you have to dig those things out all the way down to the footings. You have to break out the concrete. You have to remove one of the wall panels. It's a lot of work. Those steps are huge, heavy. You need to cement them in place up to minimum amounts, which have to provide support to the treads for these steps. And that's kind of where people go wrong. They didn't support the, the treads properly or they didn't use the right materials or some guys used to like cut pipes and put those in and the pipes himself could come would puncture through like there's all sorts of problems and deficiencies associated with these steps so pay very close attention to those treads so whatever kind of steps they are what however big whatever color whatever material they're made of do you see any cracking on the treads do you see bubbling blistering signs of any repairs these kinds of steps are very hard to repair you're very hard pressed to come by people who know how to repair them well and any kind of replacement of this product, like, oh, these are shot, we got to put new ones in. We're talking about big money now. So unless you're ready to spend big money, probably walk away from this house. In particular with these steps, I also want to point out there could be jets in the steps. It's actually a pretty good idea or else they more or less just accumulate debris all the time. But those step jets are kind of known to be a high source of leaks in swimming pools. Take a look at the step jets and see if there's any kind of sign that the gasket has malformed or there's been repairs with epoxy or silicone or you see a lot of tool marks. And by tool marks, I mean somebody's been grabbing this thing with steel channel locks and trying to hold it as they're doing stuff to it to try to fix it. All of those would be bad signs, and these are a common enough leak. I would want you to get right in there and take a good hard look at those areas and look for any signs of problems because you really don't want to see any problems there. Oh, I guess one more thing I should mention before I go here. What about the lights? I don't want you poking around with the lights very much unless you're an electrician, but you can turn the light switch on. Did the lights work? That's something that I'd like to know. Because basically, we've got check boxes right now. One is lights work, one, one, one is lights don't work. And lights not working is pretty common in swimming pools. They're kind of hard to install. They fail pretty easily. And they're awfully expensive to replace, especially when we're talking about like new color LEDs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, again, the source of lots of leaks. So if the pool light's not working right away, I'm like, oh... They, they must have a problem here because why didn't they replace the light? Maybe they did replace the light, but, you know, for hundreds of dollars a pop, if it keeps burning out, people aren't going to keep replacing it. There might be some sort of integral problem here. So, again, light's working perfectly or probably, spend, probably plan to spend some money on the lights on this swimming pool. So how much is all this stuff going to cost to get repaired if you had to do it? Like, that's, that's what any, you know, homeowner is going to be wondering is, like, I want to put numbers to this, and it's... So hard to put numbers to it because the cost of doing this kind of work to pools, whatever it is you need done, varies dramatically area to area. So, you know, a number that I give you just might be not even close to what you have in your area. So it's it's really hard to put a pin on it. But I want to try to be helpful and give you something to work with. So a liner itself, like let's say you're looking at this pool, everything past the, you know, the, the test, the liner looks like it's going to need to be done. What are we talking about here? What's this going to cost? Like $3,000 at minimum these days is what it costs to get a liner installed in your pool. And we're talking about a very small pool that doesn't need any other work. If it's a very big pool, double that number. And, you know, if, it, if it's a complicated liner, like it's got uh, some liner over steel features, some interior steps, a ledge, all this other stuff, you could be looking upwards of, you know, $10,000 by the time you do, you know, a couple touch-up and repairs to the walls or the floor might need a little bit of work. So in terms of the floor, let's say that you needed a new floor in a vinyl liner swimming pool. Well, that could mean a couple of different things. But ultimately, if I needed to pour a new floor in a vinyl pool, as a remediation effort, I'm usually doing a skim coat because I usually can't add a lot of thickness here or I'm going to change all the elevations of the steps and everything's going to be wrong, especially if the liner's already there waiting to go in. You can't change the elevations now. If you needed to add a skim coat to your floor, even just like one inch thick or something like that, you're probably still looking at a minimum of $2,000. Hopefully you can get away with doing patchwork and a lot of liner installers include a certain amount of patchwork as just the cost of installing the liner. 
But if it becomes something extensive, like more than 30% of the pool floor is deteriorate, deteriorated or damaged, you might find yourself being forced into doing a new floor in your pool. And yeah, to upwards of $2,000 is pretty normal for that kind of thing. The coping in a vinyl liner pool is not particularly expensive itself for the coping product, depending on what kind you're buying. You know, the spectrum being like 300 up to about 1500 for the kit to do the entire pool, depending on what kind of coping you're buying. A lot of the coping cost is in the labor to install it. So you don't let the low cost of the physical product itself kind of, you know, lead you to believe, oh, that won't be a big deal. It could still be a lot of work, so be aware of that. So again, in total, this is all just like the first stuff I want you to look at to help you zero in on likely candidates for houses that you want to buy with vinyl liner swimming pools without necessarily having to hire an expert to go with you to explore every single house that you're looking at. You can kind of narrow down the field a little bit with this information, hopefully, and maybe land yourself on something that's going to be a little bit more of an enjoyable experience. Avoid that whole swimming pool nightmare situation. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.